Hey guys, Austin with Grimmon Armament here. Today we wanted to take you guys through a little brief overview of how a part gets made. Uh, and so basically we're looking at a 10 millimeter, 40 cal, 45 uh, family three lug adapter for pistol suppressors. In this case, it's 578 by 28 thread pitch, which is the 1911 uh, custom thread designed by the industry that, you know, supported 1911s. And, uh, you know, so first thing that happens on a family, this is three part family that we added a part in, in manufacturing. And so the, the initial design was a three day process in CAD. And that was a long time ago. This was a vendor part. We're taking it inside. Uh, it's, it's been a few years since we've made these parts. And uh, basically uh, we took a look at this part. And the first thing we do is we look at tooling, a, a production process for the part we select and uh, we take a look at uh, how we're going to make it. And in this case, this, this geometry right here required uh, an undercut tool, so like a heavily relieved custom end mill. And so we had a thought, maybe we could design the part a little differently to make it a little bit easier to manufacture with tooling off the shelf. So it was a one day process to back in CAD to develop the part we see in Mastercam over on the right. And, and get the three-part family updated to those specifications. So then we open uh, the part in Mastercam at that point, and we uh, basically toolpath the part in, in Mastercam. And after the part uh, is toolpathed, all the strategies are applied. Uh, that, that process took about eight hours on the first part. And uh, at that point, we run it through a post-processor to uh, get code. And so we hope that the post-processor post essentially translates all the uh, programming work into workable code. And at that point, uh, we send it through a software called Kipware to convert it from the, the machine post I've got to another machine post uh, uh, type for a different type machine. And then we bring it up in Simcoe over here. And so in Simcoe, uh, we, we can use the backplot tool, take a look at actual code and simulated motion based on uh, actual code, not, not the NC file over here in Mastercam, which can show us uh, happy things, but then possibly output something different. Uh, so over here, we're looking at what, what we're actually going to see in these, these line drawings essentially depict tool motion in the machine cabinet. And this is two axis display. Uh, over here, we also add our, our bar loader sequencing. Uh, we add our, our part transfer uh, code right here that tells our machine how to come over and where to grab, where to pull, how to uh, cut off the part and send it across the cabinet. We also add uh, our part eject sequence. And... Uh, you know, for, for an example of what, what code actually does, uh, you know, the first couple lines of, of code up here, for example, we, we reference a turret. This is a, a safe move, you know, and then, then we put it in M34 turning mode. We then uh, call a coordinate system, the G54, which is the main spindle uh, coordinate system telling the machine where the part is. At that point, we... G40 cutter comp cancel, G18 we call uh, an XZ plane for turning. Uh, we T199 calls a tool life group for T0101, the main, main uh, roughing tool. And it calls it G54 relative again. The G50 line is a rev limiter. It says don't rev the spindle past 3500 RPM. So it's a safety consideration. G96 puts us into constant surface speed mode at S800, so 800 surface feet per minute in MO4 rotation uh, of the P11 spindle, which is the main spindle. So we're, we got an insert up tool and we're turning, we're rotating this way uh, in MO4 P11 main spindle. Uh, the G00 calls a rapid move to Z1.0, so one inch in front of the part. Uh, MO8 calls background flood coolant. MO7 calls high pressure coolant. X2.0 brings us down to a diameter of two inches. 
Y centers the tool. Z 50 thousandths brings us into 50 in front of the face. Uh, X 1.0 brings us down to one inch diameter. We have a redundant high pressure uh, coolant call. We turn on a M201 tool load monitor, put ourselves into G99, that's feed uh, per revol in inches per revolution mode. G01, we call the uh, tool to uh, X negative 0.0625 at a feed of five thousandths per re uh, revolution. And that's a facing cut. At that point, we call uh, an M200, uh, we kill the tool load monitoring, rapid to Z100, up to one inch, over to 25 thousandths in front of the part. And so what you can see is we're making multiple facing cuts at this part of the program. Uh, so essentially, from here, we, we kick this code when it's good to, good to output to the machine, out to Rick, and Rick will take you through the rest of the process. Thanks. Bye. Hey guys, this is Rick from Griffin Armament. Today we're going to talk about a quick overview of setting up the machine. Uh, so we're going to talk about our three lug here. This is our 10 millimeter, 40 and 45 cal version in the 5 Ace 24 pitch. Um, so first thing I do is I'm going to have to find my, my stock. Once I find my stock, I'm going to find my correct spindle liner, which eats up the space in, inside the machine so I can use various sizes. Once I have my spindle liner picked, I'm going to put pull out my correct uh, collet, put that in the machine. Now I can load my bar into the main side. Now I'm going to go to the sub side. I'm going to put on jaws. I'm going to board new jaws for every part that we take. When I, when I load uh, the new jaws, that take, to bore them, that takes probably about an hour to two hours, depending on the part that we're holding. Inserting the, ma the main side, getting the collet and all that in there normally takes about 10 to 20 minutes. So once I've got my part handling done, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put a program in the machine. I'm going to get all my tool numbers and all my callouts for that. Normally takes about you know 10 to 30 minutes depending on the, the part. Once I have all my tools that I need to go, then I'm going to start assembling them and putting them in the machine. We have our static and our, and our live tools. This is a live. This is a static. So when I put them in, I have to think about stick outs and I have to get coolant to each of the parts. So once I have all the parts put into the machine, stick outs correct, coolant on them, then I can go ahead and start inputting them into our tool life and our tool load monitoring, which the whole process of mounting tools, putting them into tool life, tool load monitoring, can take anywhere from, uh, can take anywhere from four hours to like eight hours just to do this part of it. So I'm gonna, put my tooling in, then I'm going to bring it over to the tool arm, teach it, and qualify my tool. So now the machine knows where my tool is at. So each, each uh, tool normally takes a minute or so to, in order to do. And so on this job, like we have 15 to 20 different tools. So I mean, easy, you know, half hour or so in order to go through and touch all the tools off. Once I have all my tools in and touched off, the next thing I do is I'm going to have to go ahead and I'm going to start proving out my program. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to teach our work coordinates, which tells the machine where our part is, is both on the main and on the sub side. Once I have my work coordinates taught, the next step I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dry run where I run it in the air. So just to show you what I'm talking about is I have this tool on the sub dialed up and then we're going to just do a little dry run. So I turn my rapids down and I turn my feed rate down and I control the machine and I also turn off my coolant so that I don't get sprayed by it. And so now I can step through my program and make sure everything is safe. So right now I'm in control of the machine and I can control how fast and how slow it moves. I'm watching for any bad moves or any possible collisions.
So now that I've gone through the error, I know that that tool is safe. So I'll do that for every tool uh, in the job. And so on average, every tool, you know, it normally about double the time it takes to run the tool normally because we slow everything down. So if this program was normally about a seven minute program, it would probably take about fit, uh, 15 to 30 minutes depending on the tool in order to run them through. So once I've dry ran through everything, my next steps is to go ahead and put in my, my stock and start cutting it in material. So once I've got my stock in there, I close my door and I watch to make sure everything safely comes over. I make sure I have my coolant on, my spindle and my feed rates are all turned to appropriate speeds. I close my door and I start running the part while I'm watching the control, watching loads and stuff like that, making sure nothing bad is gonna happen listening. Um, once I get my first part off, I go through and I scrutinize, check sizes, check lengths, check threads, make sure everything is there. Once I, and if something is off, we go into our wear page, which is the, the, in order to control our sizes, fine tune it, make them all perfect. And uh, depending on the parts, sometimes it requires manual edits as like this one. We went from four flats to two flats, which we manually edited at the machine, which adds more time. We, we do chamfer weights, we do finishes, things like that, little things that just make the part look better. So in total right now, yeah, we, we've got about two hours of runtime proving it out and then at least two hours of, of fluffing it, which is also part of, you know, tool load monitoring, which is, you know, ha takes some time to manipulate and get it to run smoothly. Um, once I've got all that, then I take care of my bar feeder, which is, has the part length and all that type of stuff, reload, you know, put a new bar in and all that type of stuff, eject the old one, you know, which is then all determined on how many parts and how long it is and how long it takes. It can be anywhere from maybe an hour long to maybe four hours before I get to the end, prove out that bar, ejects, loads a new one, and then once that's done, I have a proved out program ready to run in production. So load monitoring normally takes about like two to four hours because that's that's a fine one we have to keep running parts and the machine has to find that fine place it wants to run so it takes between two and four hours normally to manipulate that to get it to run without any human intervention there hey guys thanks for watching if you like what you saw click the like and the uh subscribe, subscribe button uh appreciate you watching come back for some more thanks